Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this one lights out post fight presser. We've been waiting for the former double champion. He was absolutely on fire tonight. And now he's here. So please have your questions at the ready. We're going to go to our media questions now then. And we'll start with Dylan Bowker of Sports Kida. Dylan, go ahead. Oh, I'm doing well. I imagine you're doing pretty well getting that kind of victory. But I'm sort of surprised just leading into the knockout there. Like It seemed like there were certain moments where Gorobets really showed that durability like did that surprise you at any point not to be cocky or anything but he was breathing kind of heavily so it was just the beginning of the end um at the start of that second round so it was just about picking my shots there was some times there where i could have just unloaded some huge shots on him um when he had the knee down but you know i kind of give that the benefit of the doubt with the ref one step in or not the ref said a word he stood up and the fight continued but um there's there was a couple of moments in that fight where um, it should have been stopped earlier than when it was. And I'm curious also, just because of the submission grappling kind of call out there, obviously the history with Christian Lee is there. Like, is that more about wanting to facilitate a quick turnaround? Is it getting on the 1X show? Like, what was the, I guess, nucleus of that call out there? Yeah, so it was like, the grappling thing is, you know, they're signing huge, huge grappling names. And, you know, I came from a grappling background. Um, I started my whole journey through jiu-jitsu and I know Christian might be there for his sister's fight so why not why not make money out of it you know I might even be here at the 1x show so why not make money grappling it out I know he's not going to make weight anytime soon in the featherweight division and the, the fans and the media keep calling for a new one versus Lee 3 so I was like let's just grapple it out I'm sure he wants that one back it's not animosity I respect Christian he's a great champion a great human being uh, and this is no animosity towards Christian at all. I'm just saying, let's make money for our family, man. Yeah, for sure. Definitely got that impression when I heard the call out too. But just curious how you're planning to celebrate this win here lastly from me. It seemed like you were ripping some Call of Duty a few weeks ago there. Like, you going to be doing some of that? Yeah, look, I haven't touched the game for a whole week now. Um, but shout out to Activision for always looking after me and, and my manager, Reese, um, for, you know, hooking it up with Call of Duty. But, um... No, uh, I actually owe the family so much time. I've eight weeks to be exact that I was bit, I've, I was at home and I got to see my kids sleep and I got the hug. My heart was full, but I physically wasn't there for them. So um, I'm there for them now. It's their time. Our next question comes from Nick Atkin of South China Morning Post. Good evening, Nick. Um, yeah, congratulations, man. First of all, I know it must mean a lot to you. Can you just tell me a little bit about what the last couple of years has been like? You, you touched on it briefly in the interview there, but what depths did you go to and the, the despair you felt? You said you questioned whether you still wanted to do this or felt you were good enough. I was at the lowest of low, man. Losing my title after being three years dominant champion, losing in the most embarrassing way in the second fight. I was in a dark hole and, you know, for me, I, d I don't usually read comments or anything like that, but I read comments this time. I don't know why. And it kind of hit me in the heart like these guys were saying I was finished, glass jaw, blah, blah, blah. You get hit, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's a fight. You're going to get hit. Um, it's just unfortunate the way the, the last two fights happened. But um, I read them even though I shouldn't have, and I let it get to me even though I shouldn't have. And what made the cherry on top was during this fight week, where Kirill said that I was done, I was past my prime, and that sparked something in me. I mean, I was already fresh from a fight camp, and I had so much faith behind everything that I've been working on, but he sparked that extra fire of me wanting to do damage. And your approach seemed to be a lot more patient. Was, was that by design after the last couple of fights? Um, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I always get told off from my coaches, always get told off from my coaches. Angler, Henry Hoof, Coach Chrysler. I have this I have this part of the fight where it's so exciting and I land a punch and I'm like, oh man, that felt so good. Let's land it again. And that's where I always get hit. And obviously the tables turn from there. So um, it's always been my game to be patient, to, to figure out my opponent, to wear him out, figure out what his game plan is and then up to ultimately shut it down and then come back with my my fight game but um yeah it was just a more a matter of man every fight that i have from here on i'm making a second title run 
um, and every fight that I have from here on is going to be the most professional Martin Nguyen that everyone has ever seen where it becomes more of a technical chess match and I'm at the same time I'm taking your head off so and last one from me you said you want to go back to Sanford MMA you promised Henry Hoof but uh, as part of you tempted to maybe stay in Australia after this performance um what, what elements of this camp beneficial to you being closer to the family 100% man but you know um the only thing that really lacked in this training camp were training partners um I had I it was strictly not that not that um it was a bad thing but at Sanford you have like high quality sparring high quality like you train you, you it's things that you just got to train your eye in the sense of a fight for and Sanford provides that under fucking world renowned coaches what I have here in Australia I obviously have my family and I get more time with the coaches um in Australia so I I have a lot more one on ones with um my striking coach Chrysler and my jiu jitsu coach um Kian and just a bunch of killers uh on the ground as well at uh Cabra Kai so um my grappling was you know there was never a, a scratch there and I sparred boxing I never did realistically I'd done maybe one to two sparring MMA sparring rounds this whole 8 week camp um the rest were boxing or jiu jitsu boxing or jiu jitsu it was never a mixed martial arts thing where um takedowns were involved as well i probably did it once or twice with my with my boy anthony next up we're going to go to conan from conan daily conan your mic is open hey, congratulations martin you mentioned to mitch right after uh, you win that if it weren't your wife and your kids you wouldn't be here could you please um elaborate on that i was in a dark hole man coming off two losses my wife seeing me at my lowest in this sport the whole team everyone seeing me at the lowest at, at this sport everyone picturing me at that I was done man i live and breathe mma this is all i know and um for people to kind of doubt me and put me take me off the pedestal not not that i want to be on the pedestal but kind of take me off the mma um uh spotlight kind of like kind of cut me and i just I don't know the interest was well, the interest in training and all that it just wasn't there but um training for my kids training for myself training for my wife training for my family in general training for my team training for the ones that believed in me um was the sole motivation and um also to prove to the world that I can still bang and hang with the the rest of the world so um that was that was the pure self motivation to come back and um do that your opponent Kirill do you think he is tougher than you expected him to be or was he exactly I never watched I never watched one clip of his fights I let I let that to my coach Chrysler and my um, my jiu jitsu coach um uh Kian Fam um look Henry Hoof he 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 liaises with Chrysler and we worked our game plan and everything from there but I realistically didn't watch a fight of his and Um, everything that he did was everything that we trained for and um I'm grateful that my my coaches and my team prepared me well. I'll Siegel from the Go and Live network. You mentioned that grappling match with Christian Lee. What does your journey look like after that? You know, is it a return to featherweight to chase the title again, lightweight? No, nah, I'm I'm staying in the featherweight division with one new rule of the 5% body weight thing. I I got to cancel the bantamweight division out of my foresee future. I'm staying here at the the featherweight division. That's where I belong. Um as I said I'm making a second second title run for that title to get it back um fulfill all my my dreams of becoming a world champion again and you know going from there. Right yeah no we'll love to see you fight again and then um I know you said your wife and you know kids were your rock to get back to this having a legend like Henry Hooft and you know someone with a pedigree of Angla and all those fighters at Sanford does that give you some extra feel to the fire as well? 100% man those guys are not only my mentors but it's family for real it's it's actually family they the way they take me in and the way they treat me is the same way my mom and my brother teach me and my sister teaches me and my whole family um treats me sorry so i'm kind of yeah i'm kind of blessed to have them in my life that's got a derek right kind of seems like this is sort of a third act of your career you seem like a new fighter a new person i just kind of wanted to know like 
What do you think are the biggest differences now as a fighter in person since when you started in one championship? I know that was a long time ago. You've had a long career, but, you know, where where do you think you've gotten to now? Okay, I'll tell you a huge difference between the old Martin and the new Martin. It only, it only happened up until September last year where I got knocked out by Kim Jae-woo. Um, I kind of figured that I spent so much negative energy towards hating someone that I don't even know at all. Hating someone. And hate is a bad word. And I say, I say this because I was in that young mind mentality like every fighter, like, you know, I'm going to kill this guy. I want to beat the shit out of this guy. I want to F him up so bad. But I'm like, it came to a point where I spent more energy in that than the actual fight itself. And I kind of figured that, like, man, why do I, why do I need to be like this? I, I need to focus my main energy on what counts the most and that is me being able to perform and um and that was a turning point i i hated i hated tan lee i hated kim jay Wung equally the amount and, but all in all they're nice guys <laughs> i don't know what i mean it's that young man mentality you know um that young killer young fighter egotistic i hate this i hate that i want to kill them i want to punch them in the face it's going to happen the cage doors are going to close and we're going to fight but um i just spent my energy on the wrong wrong places in um, my fight system. So yeah. Wong Lazada, do you have a question? Yep, I'm here. Hi Martin, congratulations Hi, on doing. You've mentioned when you were younger, you wanted to push the shit out of your opponent, but now you're getting older. Um, you're a family man, so how does that how does that kind of attitude reflect on being a father to your kids? Dude, that attitude and that that um that men this current mentality is what my what I want my kids to go through, you know. I even say it to my daughter and my son when I take them to events and, you know, their sporting events. Look, just do your best. Don't worry about anyone else. Don't focus on anyone else. Just focus on yourself. Always practice to be better and keep being better. And, you know, it's it's just that I want the best for them. And then, so being negative towards someone else that you don't even know, that's just wasting, wasting good energy that you have inside. So, um, Look, whatever I have in my heart, I, I kind of try to, my wife as well, trying to push onto the kids to always treat people better than what they um, what they are or even give them the benefit of the doubt anyway. That was Bong Lazada from Inquirer.net. Thank you, Bong. Next, we have a text question from Randolph Leongson of spin.ph. He asked, you and your wife have a truly special bond. How much does she mean to you? Is that even a real question? I'd die for her. So, yeah. I'd, I'd die for her. I'd literally die for her. So I hope that answers your question. Next up, we are going to go to Luisa Morales, who has a text question from the Philippine star. She asks, what were you communicating at the beginning of the third round when you pointed at Gorobets and nodded? That he was, it was just the beginning of the end. Every single time I pointed at him, he took a deep breath in like it was his last. And I was like, I got you, man. I got you. It's, it's coming. I was just letting him know, like, I got you, man. It's... It's coming sooner than you know it. That's obviously egotistic. It's in my head. Bit of mind games as well, but I was pointing at him to let him know that I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying in your face. All right, we've got our next text question coming from Panipong Tairat from Thailand Media. You mentioned Christian Lee as a potential opponent in a grappling match. Anyone else you have in mind for an MMA fight? MMA fight, the whole featherweight division is on notice. Whether it's going to be a rematch, whether it's a new potential match, everyone is on notice and trust that all right next up we've got a question from tim from mma sucker tim asks martin great victory did you ever find out if he was mexican or filipino (laughs) (laughs) i don't know man one day he wakes up eating tacos the next day he's eating balut lechon i don't know we're still we're still trying to figure it out (laughs) We will open the microphone of Mr. Ivan Stewart of Dugout Philippines. Go ahead, Ivan. Are you looking to face the Tanley Gary Tonwin immediately, or will you still fight like one or two times before thinking about the world title? The world title will come slowly but surely. Let me just work. Let me let me just soak this uh, win in. As I said, the whole featherweight divisions are noticed. So whoever won championship, give me um, is my next victim. But you know, good luck to. I'm sure they're fighting now. Good luck to either Christian, uh, sorry, not Christian, um, Tan Lee or 
Um, Gary Turner made the best man win. You're still going to be in the top five, so they know already that I'm a potential opponent. I just wanted to ask you, Martin, uh, tell us about those body shots because they look pretty sweet. How good did it feel to land those? I swear, when it lands, you know they're going down. But he, I, I threw one very, very good one. I think it was in the first round or the second round, second round, and he ate it, and I, and I felt his, like his whole, like his abs and everything tense, and I was like, okay, he's putting on a good poker face. I just got to be patient and not rush it. And when I hit that second one and he took a knee, I was like, man, like, that, that hurt. I think making a man quit via a body shot is more satisfying than putting him out cold. You've had some sweet finishes in your career. We know you for this. Uh, how do you rank this one, given everything you've been through? It was pretty lively. It was performing. Um, it was dominating. Um, it was, you know, something for the crowd to, to look at me and say, man, he's got pretty decent boxing. But um, at the end of the day, man, it's, it's like Chachu said, you perform for yourself, you perform for your family, you perform for your crowd. As, as, as much as I, uh, I believe in that, that's 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 the that's the main focus, right? You go out there, you put on a show. You wish to earn the fifty k will make everything better. If you don't, you're grateful. You move on and you go from there. Martin, you're the man. Great to see you back in the wing column. Maximum respect. Thank you to the media for your questions. Stay with us.